late 2019, it was New Year's Eve. I was in San Francisco for a New Year's Eve holiday weekend. And I heard on the news about an outbreak of unexplained pneumonia in China. China is battling a new and rapidly spreading respiratory virus. The number of people infected has tripled to more than 200. I was immediately alarmed. So I actually wound up uh, getting my infection control team together at the children's hospital and talking to it with my colleagues in the adult hospital as well. And we uh, were just keeping an eye on what was going on in China. We didn't even have a name for the disease yet. So the virus itself is called SARS-CoV-2. The disease is called COVID-19. Um, I was a young faculty member at the very beginning of the HIV epidemic. I've seen Ebola outbreaks, I've seen malaria, I've seen cholera outbreaks in my own communities that I work in. So I have dealt with devastating outbreaks throughout my career, but this disease uh, in many ways has not had a parallel in most of our lives. Early on, we were watching and modeling the disease, trying to understand the transmission dynamics. On the clinical side, I was watching records from China. We were tracking the disease, and I think through the early part of 2020, we started seeing with trepidation that the disease seemed to be coming to the U.S. In the hospital, we were taking precautions by screening people for fever and travel. That was a, a simple time in retrospect. So as soon as we noticed that there was community transmission here, we knew that, that we were dealing with a whole new ball game. The U.S. death toll rises to 30, with more than 800 confirmed cases. That this is was at the end of February, early March. We actually activated the Incident Command Center. That effort itself is a very big deal because it brings together dozens of people from many different walks of life, expertise from engineering to infectious disease to laboratory. And because we knew what had happened in China by then, we knew that the potential for spread was pretty dramatic. We did start a study very early on, trying to look at the risk of household transmission of the virus. And then we were able to model uh, ourselves and we saw flattening, which we, we predicted could happen and we were excited about that. But uh, when we started seeing a, a really an increase in, in the cases again, we realized that we just don't understand how to control this virus. This is a droplet spread disease and we know how to control droplet diseases. We do it in the hospital every single day. But something I learned with the HIV epidemic, that human, changing human behavior uh, to control a disease is very, very difficult. It's not impossible to really do when you have to do it on a global scale. So we are working feverishly to develop therapeutics and vaccines. I think in many ways I was prepared for this. We had just gotten through the worst Ebola epidemic in a country that I was working in. So I have not changed the way I think about this virus at all. I was always hopeful and I still am hopeful. I work on clinical trials of antivirals and vaccines and other types of treatments for diseases like this. And I know we can come up with treatments because this is not a disease that we cannot conquer. We can conquer this disease and we've conquered other diseases like this or worse.